I've got Dalby, current number one, Joe Wildsmith. Thanks for having me. It stood me in good stead coming from Wednesday to go to Derby because the pressures are similar. Favourite ever goalkeeper? Petrick. Team sheet come out, it's like Czechs players. Because like, oh. Hutch played with him at Chelsea, he's like, oh, I'm going to ask for his shirt. I'm like, nah. It's mine. He's like, it's mine. And if I'm not getting a shirt, I'm getting his helmet. Get <laughs> <laughs> Rhodes to come out about 10 minutes later, just vass on his head. <laughs> Went down, played 45 minutes. Manager pulled me off, I thought, what's going on here? He's like, I want to sign you now. And I'd signed for Sheffield Wednesday by my birthday in December. Every time I've bumped into him since, it's like, before I tell anyone about what a goal you are or anything like that, he got up in front of 100 people and signed me. Two days later, Rhodes rang me up, he's like, right, uh, I've rang Nicky Law, uh, you're going out for, for the rest of the season. The first day he signed, he came up to me and he just went, I am here for you. Ledge. I've never seen anything like it in football in my life. What a save from Mark Howard. Thanks to the sponsors of this episode, Forged Irish Stout, an unbelievably smooth, creamy stout by Conor McGregor, the UFC legend. Not here to take part, but here to take over. Forged Irish Stout is on a mission to become the biggest Irish stout. Conor McGregor has taken over the whiskey game. Now he's about to take over the stout game. Available in Asda from Midsummer. Me and my guests will be enjoying a few cans in the next few episodes. If you fancy checking it out too, make sure you hit the description below and find out where you can get Forged Irish Stout. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Yours Mine Away podcast with me, Mark Howard. Today I am joined by another top goalkeeper and I'm absolutely delighted to have in. I've got Dalby, current number one, Joe Wildsmith. How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm buzzing to have you in, mate, especially after the season. You, ugh, being an ever-present in any team is a difficult feat, so like, fair play to you. Oh, thank you. 49 games in all competition, I think I've got. Or was it a bit more? No, 54 games, I apologise. Yeah. Oh, 54 games in all short, competition. No, yeah. um, you played every game in the league. Absolutely delighted. EFL, yeah. FA Cup. That's like, it's, a, it's a hard thing to do these days. Yeah, it's uh, it's something obviously I've never done in my career uh, up to up to this season. So it, it was something I set out at the start of the season. I just want to play as many games yeah. as possible. And and yeah, to get, to get that many games, especially coming into a new club and new surroundings. Uh, but yeah. Really, really happy with uh, with how the season went. Unfortunately, obviously, how it ended yep. for the team and uh, just missing out on the playoffs on the final day. Um, but on a on a personal note, as you say, um, to to do that and play every single minute of of every game, um, yeah, it's something I'm really proud of. Yeah, no, congratulations on that. Right before we get started, I need to say a huge thank you to uh, today's sponsors, Forge Irish Stout, for sponsoring this episode. They're not here to take part; they're here to take over. Uh, it's available in Asda come August. Uh, cheers, mate. Cheers. Have a little pour of this. You like a drink as well, yeah? Being from Sheffield. <laughs> Must do. Viper rooms on a Tuesday night. Up or downstairs? <laughs> uh, I'm upstairs, I think. <laughs> upstairs? Yeah, preferred Interesting. upstairs. Downstairs was a bit, nah, not for me. I, I was also a bit too old, I think, at that point. Yeah. I think I was uh, about 26. Uh, probably downstairs a bit young for me. Oh, wow. Uh... Yeah, so, that was uh, in the younger days. Yeah, definitely. Some good nights out in Sheffield, days. by the way. It's just all in the same place, isn't it? Yeah. So you don't have to walk around. But yeah. no, no, it's uh, it's a great, great city. That, especially down Ecclesall Road as well, Point and Dog. Like I say, bank holidays down Ecclesall Road. Uh, I've got some good memories yeah. down that road with the lads. Yeah, definitely. Some good times, right? Um, like I said, you've been an ever present this season, but especially going, uh, moving to Derby uh, as a new club, coming through Sheffield Wednesday uh, to go to a new club and then establish yourself straight away. It's not an easy thing to do. Was that part of the brief when you were signing? When I was signing, uh, it was with the understanding that there was going to be another goalkeeper brought in. Um, that didn't sort of really um, come to come to light until um, a bit later on when the season had already started with with Joe coming in from, from West Ham. Uh, and obviously it was really unfortunate for Joe to sort of, his season to go the way it did with, with breaking his arm. Uh, but it sort of gave me that head start uh, that it did take him a while to come in from Ireland 
uh, where he was already on loan. Um, and it sort of gave me that that foot in to, to get myself in the team and create some performances um, and show showcase what I can do um, for, for Liam at the time, uh, Liam Rossini. Um and then obviously Liam left, unfortunately, and, and went to went to uh, went to Hull oh, eventually. Uh, but since Paul Paul Warren's come in, the, the current gaffer, it's I, I couldn't say um, a bad word about him. He's he's been absolutely brilliant with me, and and the fact that he sort of showed faith to to let me um, just just play my game and and concentrate on on what I need to do uh, with with Andy Warrington yeah. and. Uh, You've That's got a lovely it. little goalkeeper group at Derby as yeah, well. Now. Yeah, but, obviously Loach is in there, yeah. and uh, we had uh, H, the young uh, young lad um, Harrison Fox, and then Luke McGee come in towards the end of the season. It was a, a really good group, and probably one of the best I've had uh, in my career in terms of like everyone sort of together and striving for the same thing, all pushing for that that playoff place. And but yeah, it's 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 been a sort of as seasons could have gone, leaving Sheffield Wednesday, sort of going out into the unknown and going to a new club. It's all all brand new to me at the it's time. A massive club as well. Yeah, and like I say, it, it sort of stood me in good stead coming from Wednesday to go to Derby because the the pressures are similar yeah. and the recent history is similar in terms of the point deduction getting relegated a hard done by a club both of them really yeah aren't they? i mean i don't know the ins and outs and obviously they tried doing something that didn't work yeah. and and they've been punished for that but for it to to survive the way it did in the summer and then rebuild and then almost get to where it needed to be back into the championship was, was uh so unfortunate and but it's been so positive in and around the club uh, everyone's been brilliant with me and uh i couldn't sort of praise the club and the surroundings and the fans and the group of lads at the at the club more because I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed every single moment of it. Uh, as you said already uh, that you came close to making it into the playoffs and you just missed out by a point. Was it a huge disappointment or was it like the club's building? I know at the time it feels like uh, a disappointment for that season. Yeah. But is it you're part of something now and it's like we are trying to strive to get the club going again I think when, pushing in the right direction. When, when the gaffer came in he, he he knew what he wanted and the players knew what they wanted even at the start of the season we we, we looked around the the change room and the personnel that was in there we we understood that we had the 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 players to do that um the depth of the team I think was sort of like the undoing and and a lot of players played a lot of minutes um but to get that close and, and like I said, to, to get to Hillsborough at the end of the season and just need, uh, at the end we just needed, I think, uh, a point or, a, I don't know, a, to win or something like that, but it was so close. Yep. Um, and then sort of like the referee in decision sort of like gets pulled into it and it's like, oh, we could have done this and Kurt gets sent off and it just felt like everything was sort of going against us and then crowds are screaming because Barnsley have scored and then it gets and then like Wednesday fans are screaming because it's been disallowed and oh, it's just a whirlwind of emotions and then obviously for me to be going back for the first time gets brought into it and yep. it's just like oh my god and what's those feelings like when you're on the pitch do you do you feel and sense what the fans are doing and they're cheering um I mean I think you're always aware yep. you're in the game and after that sort of first couple of minutes where you feel everything and you come out of the tunnel and you get into your game and it sort of comes out of it but then I think when there's more on it when you need to know what's going on elsewhere it becomes more apparent the last 10 that, minutes oh, of those yeah. games oh, it's horrible yeah. especially because it was only one nil yeah it's like right we only need one chance like one chance like we might just get it we might not like but yeah it's really disappointing in the end and uh, the changing room like it's just one of those changes you never want to be in yep but i think that only um creates more that's um, what i was gonna lead on to yeah is going forward now derby as a club it's, it's, it's become more attractive again because of the success that they've had on the pitch what you lot have done especially how badly it has been off the pitch really yeah. uh, and obviously to see that you lot have gone on and really kicked on and strove forward instead of letting the club almost stagnate I think that from the outside world it's very positive mm. yeah I think I think the feedback from the fans has always been that they're just so proud of the fact that the club is where it is yep. it's it's still a club and then for the, the the team to sort of go and show and and play a style of football that's quite exciting and 
especially at home, we're getting out like nearly thirty thousand every week. And it's it, actually in, incredible. In, in yeah. League One, it's like oh my, like it's ridiculous. Um, the stadiums like. It's, it's just not League One standard. And like say, you go to certain places in League One and it's completely different. But we understand that everyone who's coming to Pride Park is trying to scalp us. It's their big game. It's a big, like going to Hillsborough, like you're going to Portman Road, like they're big historical stadiums. Yep. Um, but like I said, that's the pressure that, that we need to deal with and we need to understand. And like I said, it, it, going that close this season and showing the fans that the club's still alive and bringing all that positivity into this coming season, hopefully, can can drag us up, up fingers and, crossed, uh, mate. and take us up. Fingers so, yeah. crossed. Right, I'm going to crack on with a quick fire quiz as well now, right? Right. Just break you in a little bit. Uh, right, catch or parry? Catch. Yep, goalie. <laughs> so met, the amount of non-goalies, it will just go parry. Oh. It looks better. Uh, Favourite colour kit? I like yellow. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, we had a yellow kit this season. Really enjoyed it. Um, got some little matching boots and then there was a little bit of like a an aqua tint on it. So nice. the cells look really good with it. Just matched up. Yeah. Lovely. What colour boots you wear? I had the Pumas on. Um, I don't know, they're like Future or something like yeah. that. Uh, they're like a bit ankly. Oh, yeah, Not they too are. too yeah. ankly, but a little yeah. bit. Um, and then they had like a, an aqua line a down the side. A bit of blue, yeah, nice. Yeah. Matched them up, lovely. I yeah. love all the matching stuff, to be honest. Right, uh, play out from the back or kick it long? Uh, it was a bit mixed this year. Yeah, nice. Uh, Liam wanted total football. Gaffer was more like, play what you see. Yeah. But What do you prefer? From young, it's a hoof it all day. <laughs> like, get it up as far Love away it. from the goal as possible. Yeah. Can't score from there. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, I really enjoyed sort of like dipping into it a yeah, little bit this changing. season. No, yeah. I, 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 I still love booting a ball as far as I can. I, do you, oh, mate, even I when you're a kid in the back garden, you, you just want to kick it My miles. second league game was against you, and I just remember you were out well, just absolutely levering it. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I'm on my toes for every goal kick. Can't, can't <laughs> score from there. That's what I was, yeah. I was always taught, is you can't score from the opposition's half. Well, you can, but, but I, I get a bit of go every now and then. Yeah, why not? Uh, right, favourite ever goalkeeper? Uh, Petrick. Yeah? Yeah. Hands down. Uh, See, you would have, have started watching, and I had the pleasure the of playing League. against him. Like, I got, yeah, like, I've got a shirt, and just to see what he did in that sort of period in the, in the Premier League, like for Chelsea just, as well. Oh, yeah. it was just some goalie. Man. Yeah, I played against him when he was at Arsenal. It just yeah. wasn't the same. Mine's same, yeah. I've got the Arsenal kit. I obviously wish I got the Chelsea kit, but like, say it's still because I, I, I didn't think he was going to play that game. We played him in the cup, and. Um, it, like, all in the press, it was like, oh, Matt Macy's going to play, or like, I can't remember who the second choice at that time Ospina was. Or something? Maybe, yeah. Um, but I don't know if he was injured. Yep. Uh, and then Team Sheet came out, it's like, Czechs play. I was like, oh, yeah. Like, Hutch is like, because uh, Hutch played with him at Chelsea, he's like, oh, I'm going to ask for his shirt. I'm like, nah. It's mine. He's like, it's mine. And if I'm not getting a shirt, I'm getting his helmet. <laughs> <laughs> That's always, we always had this same joke as well. That if you could get his helmet, surely, because uh, uh, there was one point they put it on Champ Man, didn't they? He went into yeah. a boardroom wearing a suit on Champ Man, <laughs> the wearing on. his helmet it's and did class. his contract negotiations. He's like, I that must have been an ongoing joke at every club. It's like, brilliant. Be nice to get his shirt, his mm. helmet though. He's, <laughs> he's a mad chap. Um, right, favorite ever stadium you've played at? Favorite stadium, Anfield. Yeah, yeah. This Atmosphere. season, ridiculous. Kept a clean sheet as well, by the way. Yeah, enjoyable, really enjoyable. Um, and it was full. Like, I didn't expect it to be full, uh, but then different breed of fan. Yeah. Um, every game's just like there's fifty odd thousand in there. I was like, Phew. could you feel? The atmosphere, uh, like, you know what was mad? So we stayed in like Birkenhead and it was such a rash decision. The traffic was a joke. I was literally had like five minutes to get ready. Like, and I was like, oh. I didn't have time to think about it. I was like, right, I'm literally just getting ready, get out, do my warm up. And the game was started and it probably was for the best. Like cause it, the build up, sometimes it just gets to you like, and if I've you're thinking a about a game story. and game and game. But um, now went out there like, they had a few kids out and stuff like that, but like I said, Firmino, come on, and they had um, Nunes playing, and um, but yeah, like just I mean, Keller's some goalie as he's well, a, he's a fair. really good goalie, like, isn't he? Um, but yeah, no, just a great, great experience, obviously, to get a clean sheet there as well. Obviously, penalties, penalties, and you never know, but yeah, just class. Like, my dad was there, my father in law was there, yeah. and just memories that last. 
Um, but yeah, so definitely. I've got a story similar to so uh, when I was at Sheffield United, yeah. we got to the League Cup semi final, played Tottenham away. Yes, and Nigel Clough deliberately. We left late the hotel and we hit traffic. And like I, I was doing my tape on my fingers on, on the, the coach. Don't and like, there was one point it was like we might have to put a kit on you now. Mm. And it was getting so tight. We literally rolled out to the game and we lost one nil. Uh, Jay McEvely gave away a penalty. But we played unbelievably. And it's like, because we only turned up 20 minutes before kickoff, it was like, just go out and do it. Yeah. You've done all the prep you need. The build-up's the worst thing sometimes. Sometimes it is, yeah. yeah. That lingering around in a dressing 100%. room. Before the managers named the bench and stuff like that, it was just like, go on, out you go. I say, like, home games at Chef Wed, we, we used to get down, like, we'd have pre-match at the training ground. Training ground's just up the road. It's like, right, lads, you just get yourself down there, like, whenever you want. Just be there for half one meeting in the changing room. Like, lads are down there, like, just gone 12 like half 12 it's like there's two and a half hours before the game actually starts like and you just sat there like just twiddling your thumbs and just thinking yeah like, you get some lads that drive off to costa go and get yeah. coffee come back 100 like, percent. but like i just think sometimes it's better like you said to just turn up get out do your warm-up yeah and then that's it you're in it yeah match of the day or sky sports news match of the day yeah hands down yeah grew yeah. up watching it didn't we always. yeah like, always taped uh my dad would tape it at night so then straight in away in the morning you could just watch it whatever time you were up yeah but yeah right long sleeve shirt or short sleeve shirt uh a changer we've got a changer it used to be a long sleeve yeah, well it, long sleeve was all you got baggy in it and and then it was like but you can cut it if you want and then it just i was like nah that looks a bit naff like so yeah short sleeves and if and if it's a bit too cold then i'll chuck an under armor Basically. But, yeah but short sleeves most of the time yeah now. nice uh world cup or champions league world cup yeah yeah everyone's got to say that surely yeah. winning a for your country yeah it's different yeah immortalized how tall are you you can add inches on here. No, I'm, uh, I'm not going to fact check foot this. Yeah, two and a half. Yeah, <laughs> nice. 108, uh, 189 centimeters. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. But I, I'm six foot three. Yeah, hundred percent. No, hundred and eighty nine point ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, the best goalkeeper in the world right now. Right now is I still think it's Courtois. Yes. Yeah. Who's running him close? The t uh, Allison and Edison are running close. <laughs> I, yeah, Allison yeah. for me. Yeah. Just a beast, innit? Just got everything. Yeah. Courtois is obviously doing it and winning ridiculous trophies. So. Well, it, it's close though, isn't it? Yeah, they're, it they're not bad. Yeah. All three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're doing all right. I think they're doing all right. From, I don't think they'll be that bothered about me asking which one's the best. Uh, head tennis or goalie wars? Uh, head tennis every day. Yeah? Yeah. Not goalie wars? Uh, just... Don't get to play it enough, do saying you? Saying that though, the fact that goalie wars only comes around once in a blue moon... And the, the buzz you get when it happens, but it's every day at Derby. Yeah. Like, I can't say his nickname on uh, on, on, on the podcast, but Andy Warrington, yeah, um, yeah every day. Yeah. And he, he, he likes to get involved. He's getting a bit stiff now, but he likes to get involved. Make sure he's playing, yeah. yeah. But to be fair, like, head tennis at, at Chef Wed got way out of control. Like, did it yeah we're, we're going out an hour early like, yeah, to training yeah. like don't worry about the meeting like oh, goalies don't need to be in the meeting we're going out an hour early just to play head tennis oh mate it was like all-star head tennis like i said like by water weaves then kirky come in then westy come in and it's just like and then me and camel on each team and adam davis yeah. and uh but yeah lewis price some competitive but then, goalies but then, there as well oh, mate it got, it got it got so serious. It, there was a game where the bit of needle and a uh, few decisions were a bit like, not sure if that one was in, but we'll believe you. Like, and then uh, I think Rhodesy, um, he's, uh, he's been sort of set up for, for the header and we played for his side. So it's like been set up. Someone's added it up and the road is coming in with the header and Cam's just put his oh, foot no. up. Studs in the face. Studs on the top of the head. Oh. And he's come up and he's like and just blood just squirting out. <laughs> no. Nah. And he's like, whoa, whoa. Just like, like he's going over dizzy and that. But oh weaves just like Rosie, just case I'll be in Altec and like he's come out with Who won the point? <laughs> <laughs> he got um now he had to be um Kai boshed after yeah, that for it's a like, bit. Right. 
Let's, let's actually do some goalkeeping now. Yeah. But we just took it for a bit. Rodi come out about 10 minutes later, just vast on his head. <laughs> he's like, no, I'll do it. It's fine. And then, like, all the way through the session, he's just a bit, ooh. He ended up going in. But, yeah, Ed Tennis was, like, every day at Wednesday. It was, like, it was almost like um, just just religion. Like, yeah. Rodi loved it. It was, like, it was like his warm-up. Like, you don't realise, like, how much you're actually so working. So much fast feet. Yeah. Uh, he's, like, it's the perfect warm-up for... A goalkeeping session yeah um but no it was it was brilliant like to just sort of like have that camaraderie early yeah. doors bit of needle like don't mind it and but that, obviously that time it went a little bit far yeah. but accidental it's good though i hope it's so good <laughs> right last one on this right uh save a penalty or score a goal uh save a pen really yeah yeah it's just better L last like, minute save a pen yeah to, yeah. to guarantee Saying the that, win though uh, i got my head on a on a corner did you go up for one yeah yeah plymouth away um it was it was no good like see, Walt, was no uh, good. you had mike cooper on didn't yeah. you what about the save from waltz's header yeah, early on in the season i thought yeah like if i can get a little bit like that it, nothing like it mate it's just a bit of a like oh, i'm up and it just hit my head and just sort of went out but that buzz like you said like, if i did like you never know what would you do like I what is the celebration know. for a goalie if you score a header even, now that I've got short sleeves, I might even take my top off. Yeah, nice. Right, it's just easier to get over the gloves. <laughs> True, yeah. Imagine a long sleeve trying to get over oh, a pair of gloves. Just like, just standing just like, on it. <laughs> It'd take you ages. You'd get booked, before, I think, before you Anyone get your Anyone who's taking it, like, you've just got to make a decision before you go out to training. Is it a jumper or not? Because yeah. it's just a nightmare to try and take your jumper off. You've oh, just, just got to go with it. Yes. Well, I was having this chat last week, but what do you wear in training? See... This changes with everybody, by the way. I like a jumper. Do like, it's a mad baggy, isn't it? Yeah, but the like the, the the arms are quite tight. Yep. But they're too long. Yeah. So then it's like it starts all rucking up and but like throughout the season I've got more into wet tops. And you're gonna you cut yours. I cut my yeah, yeah, I cut I've my not, full I've sleeves not, off now. I've not I'm put, then I put my t shirt on over the top. Right. So you've just got under armour, wet top. T-shirt, yeah. yeah. Just back to front. Yeah, just inside out, back yeah, to front, mate. Like it. Probably explains a lot of my mistakes. <laughs> right, uh, I want to go back to your earliest memory, right? Why goalkeeping? And when did you become a goalkeeper? Uh, so we got flyers through at the school, at primary school, to go to a um, sort of like an open trials day at the local um, football team, Hands With Boys. And... Uh, didn't go as a goalkeeper. There was hundreds of kids there from every school like in that area. And my mate ended up getting in as a goalie. And like we didn't. He was like the only one from our school who got in. And then sort of like because we'd all sort of put ourselves out there to to go and play for a football team, we decided, right, we'll just all join the same one. And there was a new team starting up um in the in the area and Basically, my dad became the, the manager and we all sort of joined it. It was like bottom division, yeah, like yeah. just literally playing Proper for the crack. Like we were nine years old. And, like um, a little league sort yeah. of thing, yeah. Seven aside, like A and B team, like it's just like having a laugh. And then um, we didn't have a goalie. So my dad's like, look, Joe, we haven't got a goalie. First few games, just you had to go in goal and then we'll swing it round like and never came out. It's mad. Like it li literally like... It's mad because you, like I say, you just get that, you get into it, then you're like, oh, this is all right. And then the parents are like, oh, player at match, like, Joe, you've done well. And they say, oh, this is all right. Like, but, and then, yeah, like, it, it just stuck. And, um, funny story, my dad ended up getting suspended for abusing a referee. <laughs> but, tell us more. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, there was a 16 year old referee learning the game, doing under nines football. One of my mates has been kicked in the head, gone down, holding his head, and the refs played on. My dad ran on the pitch. He's nine years old. Like, yeah, pick the kid up, Christ. Hey, get off the pitch, get off the pitch. I haven't told you you can go on the pitch yet. I mean, dad's getting pissed off. In yeah. other words. I know uh, you can swear on this, it's oh, fine. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's been kicked in head. Um, and straight red to my dad, the manager. Uh, and he ended up getting a three month ban from watching me, which was the reason he sort of packed in. 
another guy took over for the rest of the season and then the team split so we were sort of playing like under 10s football but half of them were nine half for 10 and then the rest moved up and my mum ended up becoming the manager no way and my dad helping out so like my mum was like now the manager which is like i like what what's going on here dad's turned into club secretary instead. yeah uh first team coach yeah. um but yeah uh she took it so serious like she's at every meeting like doing all the badges and stuff like that and we ended up getting like a couple of promotions and stuff like, like F to E, yeah. E to E to D, and then um, joined secondary school. And the uh, lad who I met in my tutor uh, in the first year, he's like, Joe, like our goal is on holiday. We play for Greenhill um, in the in the A division um, at that time. You had to come down and, and help us out. Went down, played forty five minutes. Manager pulled me off. I thought, what's going on here? He's like. Uh, I want to sign you now. No, like, really. I, we've got another goalkeeper who's on holiday. Like, that's fine. Like, you'll play half and half, but you won't be here. Like, I'd get six months. And you won't be here. And I'd sign for Sheffield Wednesday by my birthday in December. No way. So it was like, just so like, He saw something fast, then. It was just fast track. Because he <laughs> was at Liverpool as a kid and ended up sort of falling out of the game through his knees and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it was good to like have that someone who'd sort of been in and around it and understood it. And then the club secretary was like, like we'll just get scouts down straight away. Like, you know, I was, I was all aware of this. Like, it was, it was like, but why? Like, yep. I didn't understand. And had you been doing much goalie training? Was it just like your dad taking you in the park? And so my dad used to do a bit with me, like on, on the sessions and uh, there'd be other dads who'd help my mum out and stuff like yep. that in, in the other stuff. And then um, we used to go down to where my mate at Hands With Boys he used to do a session with, um, oh my God, I forgot his name, but um, sort of like, oh, <laughs> it's going to bug me that. Because uh, he, he used to be a pro at Sheffield Wednesday for a couple of years. Um, and he works down at the club now, but he used to do like out of, outsource, like goalkeeper yep. training. Um, Poltz, uh, Ian Poulter. Yep. And, um, the golfer. Yeah, <laughs> same name. I used to just go down with him on a Monday night. Yep. And uh, used to bring like some of the lads from Wednesday. Like, um, OD used to come down a few nights and uh, Aaron Jameson. Yep. And then sort of like with that and going through that uh, with, with playing and then moving to Greenhill. Um, yeah. Just, I, that specialised training, you must have felt yourself getting so much better. Yeah. And it was, it was weird because you sort of like, there's so much more to it yeah. than just like, oh, I'm just in goal now and ball's coming towards me. But like the, the techniques you learn and the the little extra bits that can just add and add and add to your game. Uh, but yeah, to go from that to, to signing, like literally within, I think it was four or five months. That's crazy. That. Wednesday then. And then it's like, right, Tuesday, Thursday nights, it's like two hour sessions. I'm like, whoa, like... We see when you first then was made aware of Sheffield Wednesday, you were interested and scouted you. Like, was it like a, a dream? Obviously, being yeah. a Sheffield Wednesday fan yeah. as a young boy. So I was already season ticket older with my dad, and and then obviously for that to come, uh, like straight away as soon as Wednesday, I'm like, well, I'm yeah, I'm going. Like, that's where I want to go. And you saw like you to blinkers on, like that's the only thing you see. Yeah. And then the off uh, the offer came in after six weeks trial um and yeah just signed and, and that was it then like you get your two free season tickets me and my dad are buzzing, <laughs> buzzing like, yeah. uh and yeah you sort of like work your way through and um end up signing my scholarship uh six months earlier than everyone else uh which was like oh like must be doing something like there's me and another lad who found out early and then the rest found out later and then uh yeah into my scholarship because like you've already mentioned some of the names but Sheffield Wednesday have got a great track record. They're like a club like Cholton as well that really good for goalkeepers. Yeah. They've always brought through young goalkeepers that have ended up featuring for the first team. Like you've mentioned O'Donnell already. Yeah. You, you, we spoke off air about Doors. Yeah. And like you, they've already shown a massive gateway for you, a footpath. No, 100%. I think the so when I was 12 and I did sign for Wednesday, we, we had Billy Mercer and he, Billy used to come in with the young like goalkeepers on a Tuesday night and actually do like a two hour session. It's like, this is first team goalie coach and yep. he's taking his time out and he'd come in with OD and he'd come in with JMO and um, 
and help us out and like you could just talk to him and he'd be like yeah what are you worried about like i can't get the ball off at floor when i'm kicking it like well try this and like he took his time out to, to come and do that and 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 then moving into when when roads he come in uh well i think i was about 15 at the time he's then bringing us out of the the day release uh coming out of school and he's like right well if you're coming out of school then you can come with us straight away like don't need to go like with, with, with your own age group like this is goalkeeper training this is what you're going to be exposed we're to specialized anyway yeah. and and then like i said you, you're around nicky weaver you're around stephen bywater who at the time like were these top goalkeepers big also, men as like, well ego like pouring out of both of them and then Rhodes is on his own like as well like he's another one who's like full of life and me and Cam are going in on on these uh, these afternoons, and it's like, whoa, like this is serious, like, and uh, the service has got to be right, or you're getting an earful, and it's just that sort of like embedding yep. into what the um, what the expectation is and what the standards are at an early age, which I think really really helped um, us. Well, you two progressed really yeah, quickly, and that's and that's what I think um, helped us both because we got exposed to it so early. We had that understanding already that this is how it needs to be, and if it's not, then words are going to be said. Yeah. Uh, and Rhodes, he was, he was especially with me. Like, he was brilliant with me, but he was, he was also fair. Like, in the sense that if he saw something, he would tell me about it. Like, like this is this ain't right. Um, this is how you should do it. This is what I need you to do. And yeah, it was tough love sometimes, but. A lot of the time, he he did look after me a lot, and I, I owe a lot to him yep. in terms of my progression uh, into the first but team. Like, like you said, I know you've mentioned a couple of, them, but you've worked with so many top experienced goalkeepers mm. that have loads of character. Yeah, do you feel like that helped or hindered you at some point? Because sometimes uh, when you look up to people, especially you being a Wednesday fan, it can be nervous. It can be yeah. daunting. I think I think the biggest one was was Wester because. In terms of where I was in my career when me and Westy sort of came, Kieran West was, yes, uh, um, me and Westy came sort of like together. I was second choice; he was first choice, and then it's it's. I took a lot of my game from Westy. We're very similar builds, yep. like, um, and I model a lot of what I've seen off off him, like I've seen off Kirky, like I've seen off Weaves, like I've seen off Bywater, yep. like like I've seen off all these like top goalies. But in terms of like body shape, I could sort of like um, see more. You in can me. identify yeah, more. definitely uh, with Westy. But then it's also hard because he was my nearest competitor in terms of playing. But at the same time, I was a young pro, and I also had that respect for him yeah. that he was the number one. He played for Republic of Ireland how many times, yeah, exactly. and he's played in the Premier League. Um, but then obviously came the time when like manager wasn't fancying him and then I'm in and then Cam's in and then it was all just a bit of a merry-go-round of of free goalkeepers at the same time uh but like you said to to take it didn't hinder me it hindered me in the sense that like sometimes it was hard to look up to him when I was his near, nearest course, competitor yeah. but at the same time I took so much from his game into mine and I took so much from all all four, five, Lewis Price, yep. Adam Davis, who was there at the time, um, OD, like in the earlier days, and and even like Weaves, like we've stuck on as as now he's 21's manager and he's there day to day and we go golfing and like he's just like we just one of the lads, like it's, it, he's literally there for the crack and he, he just don't want to be out of that bubble. Uh, but yeah, it, it was a really good sort of group of top top sort of goalies and yep. then like me and cam were sort of coming into that lovely what, what a place to learn from yeah like really was so you like, can take bits from each of their uh, game and develop and your own yeah like thoroughly enjoyable like day to day um in the goalie group like i said lots of um camaraderie with the head tennis and two touch yeah. and like just everything was just a one line or a joke with Rhodesy and like it was just really really um light-hearted but then when it come down to work it's like right it's our job yeah this yeah. is what we do it must have been really good though because you got integrated so young in that group of the goalies that when you did then step up and train with the first team you already felt like you had been part of it for a while you'd been in that atmosphere that environment yeah and it, it was it was strange because like 
Cam's job as a second year was to, right, you need to go up and see Rhodes here. Uh, what do you need from us today, uh, Andy? Um, yeah, your wheels today. Okay, yeah, what time? Yeah, uh, you need this equipment out. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, right, we need to go and set up. But like, I never had that job. Oh, <laughs> because, nice. Because there wasn't a under 18s goalkeeper at the time. Um, and then Cam went up and did his pro. And then uh, Mark Crossley come in, who I forgot to mention, uh, who, of course, is another top one goaler. Left foot as well. Oh, um, and he was my, my, my goalie coach for one year one-on-one -on -one, like which was mental like i literally he left chesterfield when sheridan got sacked yep. looking for a bit of work and yeah coming to wednesday for one year had me one-to-one -one, and then subsequently that sort of led on to me joining barnsley and getting my chance yep. in first team football so yep. uh what a guy like yep. i remember he got um he got pulled into got pulled into the office by the academy manager because he was uh, I think he was doing something with the under 14s goalies and he was like you see what it is lads like the ball you need to be gentle with the ball <laughs> yeah like, you've got to feel like it's a woman's breast oh no yeah <laughs> he's giving it all this one uh, but yeah um what, what a guy mate like, and I still see him now I still speak to him now he Legend. does his golf days yep. and he's, he's walking uh which is obviously a brilliant course um and uh, yeah, he does like, uh, get invited to all the golf days, and you, know, you see some of the people going like John Parkin and that, and uh, some Dean, stories there, Dean yeah. Saunders, and uh, yeah, like it's just Kirky's there. But yeah, no, it's um, a lot, a lot of big, big egos, a lot, a lot of big sort of big goalies. Yeah, like, just big goalies, big, big guys, goalies, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like uh, to learn off, and uh, I'm really privileged to have been in that position. Yeah. Uh, then to go to making your debut for Sheffield Wednesday, I think you kept a clean sheet against Bolton. Uh, league, yeah, first In league, the league start. Yeah, league uh, start. Oh, sorry, that was my first league clean sheet. So I made. So I went to Barnsley at the end of the year before. Played against you. Yep. Um, that was my league debut, um, and then I came back, played in the Capital One Cup um, against Mansfield. Uh, we won that and then we played Burnley away the Saturday before the Tuesday we played Bolton um, and then we lost 3-1 there but um, and then that was my first clean sheet and I remember uh, there was there was one moment in that game I was absolutely shit I, I was I couldn't kick the ball like it was like I don't know what it was but it was so like greasy like it was just a greasy night like the pitch was soaking wet and I remember I got one back on my um my left foot and I've just gone to like put it up the line <laughs> and I've hooked the life out of it and it went straight to Sam Hutchinson in the hole he just turned and like walked and like passed it out I was like oh decent and Hutch, just, like turned a good pass. And Hutch just turned around and went great pass mate like <laughs> he knew for a fact that I did not mean a single bit of it but I just played the old reverse uh, whip around the yeah. corner yeah oh, but to get a clean sheet it was just like oh, like Okay, settle like, down there. Yeah. Sometimes it's just star things like that. It's either a man of the match performance you're yeah. going to find, or it's the first clean sheet. Yeah, and you just go, I can do it. Yeah, I can I need to settle down now? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Because it, it weren't even like I was just like I was just like on edge the whole game. Yeah. I was just like I just need to get through it, just get through it. Like, and then like, as soon as that whistle goes, like right, clean sheet. Okay, just move on to that next one. Yeah, now. Uh, which it was a great season to be fair. Like in like we got the playoffs and it's, Westy got injured a, a few times. Obviously, not great for him, but in terms of my development, that like, was really good for uh, to get those chances and 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 the cup run, which was was great. Got to play at some great stadiums against great teams. So um, yeah, like at that sort of like young age, I was I think I was only nineteen, and to be exposed to all that and yeah. at, your, at your boyhood club as well. Yeah, like it was just great. Like I was just sort of like right, this is like really happening and. Yeah. Uh, it was sort of that time where I need to just like, right, okay, like, now I just need to kick on. Before we do the quiz, did you have one moment that you thought, yeah, this is it? Did you have like one game, one training session that you thought, you know what, I've got to take, this is proper now? Uh, the Arsenal game. Yeah. Uh, it was on the telly, um, third round of the cup, and like, just they put all the big guns out. And I was like, oh, wow, like, uh, Czech was playing in goal, and then I think they had like Walcott, Giroud, and Oxley Chamberlain up front. Uh, they had um, Soz, uh, Debushi, Mertesacker, all like all played. I was like, oh my, like Hleb was in uh, Flamini. Sorry, was in yep. the middle. I was like, oh, 
All right, uh, and we <laughs> we dicked them three nil, <laughs> and I was like. I don't know what's going on. Like, I had one save to make. I thought I was going to be the busiest goalkeeper ever. Yeah, of ever. course, yeah, you would do. And I was like, I had one save, and it was from Mertesacker, like the most unlikely source. And I was like, like this don't happen. Like, the, like what are the chances? I think Oxley chamberlain went off after 10 minutes. Walcott went off after 15 minutes. I'm like, they don't fancy it. <laughs> they don't fancy it. <laughs> We've got them. Uh, and then, uh, no, it was, uh, and then, like, it was just great. Like, just great cup run. Yeah. Got to the quarters, and obviously, lost to Stoke but just like I said just exposure at that age to unbelievable to it? that sort of football was, was was brilliant right what's your goalkeeping knowledge like anyway what a save from Mark Howard Have from you... what I've listened to it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> correct one point <laughs> yeah uh, time for goalie or no goalie now nah. we've already mentioned Selsey Selsey there getting another is. shout out here mate for being fuming at a quiz <laughs> I did not rig it up. You were just not very good on your day, mate. Uh, so I've got some five... good scores in there. But yeah, some good scores. By the way, these are all just played like last week. I've not looked at yeah. any of them. Well, you should have. <laughs> well, I don't think it normally matters, to be fair. So like you said, so you have five current international goalkeepers and five uh, made up names from around the world. Uh, head over to YouTube and follow our leaderboard. Uh, it's one point for each correct answer, yeah? Brilliant. All right, number one, Elia Benedettino. Italian. You could look at me as much as you want. Yes. Uh, Elliot. Elliot. Elia. Elia. Bene. Detina. Teeny. Teeny. We'll go teeny. Uh, goalie. He is a goalkeeper. He's the San Marino goalkeeper. Oh, that's a great guess. Good start. I did think. There's so Malta. many curveballs. Mm. That's yeah, sort nice. of area, yeah. Well, you might get another one then. <laughs> Number two, Benjamin Bolt. No goalie. It's uh, Ben Affleck's real name, so oh, yeah, he's definitely not a goalkeeper. Enough. Here he is. He's ben sure. Affleck, yeah. yeah. His body's all right, isn't it? Yeah, he's doing all right for himself. Yeah. I'm sure he's got a couple of quid as well. <laughs> right, number three, Gabriel Arias. Goalie. He's on fire. Chile and Racing Club keeper. Nice. Free at free. Flying. That Lawrence is um, enemy for Chile. <laughs> Could be. I, I have no, absolutely no idea, mate. Who does he play for? Uh, racing Club. Oh, nice. Yeah. Right. Number four. Momadou Jalal. Goalie. He is British rapper, oh. singer Jay Huss. Fair enough. Momadou Jalal. Jalal. Don't see that coming. No. It's a tough one to pronounce yeah. as well. Cheers. Right, number five, Peter Quill. Peter Quill. No goalie. It's not a goalkeeper. He is uh, Chris Pratt's character in Guardians of the Galaxy. I'd never seen it, so. You've done well then yeah. to guess that he hasn't played in goal in that film. <laughs> Right, number six, Dale Coling. Goalie. He is a goalkeeper. You're on fire here. Malta and Lincoln Red Imps. Uh, literally. Yeah. Lincoln Red Imps. Yeah. Playing Gibraltar, I think. Right, number seven, Mert Gunnuk. No goalie. He is a goalkeeper. Oh. He has come to Besiktas goalkeeper and Turkey. Is that the real Besiktas? The real Besiktas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's played for Turkey as well. Right, five you're on out of seven. You're still on to beat Selzy's score. Yes. That's what that's you wanted. That's all I want. That's yeah. all you targeted. Right, number eight, Georgius Paniatu. Did I butcher that? Yeah. Can you say it again? Georgius Paniatel. Can you uh, spell it, please? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, uh, I, can, I can. Georgius I can. Pani a Yatel. No I say goalie. through a grimace face. Yeah, thank God you said that because it's singer Boy George. Uh, George Michael, sorry. Boy George. George Michael. Oh, yeah. is he uh, of, um, is that Cypriot? Yes. It, yeah. yeah. I, I've put it in because I saw his name. I was like, that sounds like the most Cypriot or Greek goalkeeper. Yeah. And I've butchered his name and apologies. Uh, I've just killed that one. Right, number nine, Santiago Rojas. Goalie. 
He is a goalkeeper, mate. Paraguay and Tigger. GK. Just sounded familiar. I don't know why. Yeah. It's just a great name as well, isn't it? Santiago Rojas. Good looking fella, isn't it? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Mugshot. <laughs> right, and num number 10. Is this to beat Salsa? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, you're on seven. You're equal to him. <gasps> number 10, Shamik Moore. No goalie. Ah, he's got it. He is the voice of Miles Morales in the new Spider-Man film, Across nice. the Multiverse. Yeah, 8 out of 10, mate. That's, that's cracking effort. Unlucky that. sells eight. Yeah. He'll <laughs> <laughs> be, it'll be phoning me. He'll be blaming me that you've got eight there. There he is. He'll be phoning me going, yeah, I would have got all the goalies there. <sighs> Happy with that. Yeah. Snuck in above him. Happy. I love that. Right. So, uh, like I said, being born in Sheffield, right, I wanted to talk about the two football clubs. I'm not going to compare them, uh, but it's it's mad how two huge giants of football clubs are so separated in, in one city. Yeah, and it's one of those, like, so many cities have just that one team. Like, like I said, Leeds have that one team and um, Newcastle have that one yeah. team. Uh, obviously, Manchester's a bit different, bit bigger, but... For for a, a city like Sheffield to have such two two such big uh, fan bases and followings, um, I mean it's only it's only good for the for the city that like say Sheffield United have just got back into the Premier League yep. and obviously Wednesday went up last season, which which always helps for sort of morale because when. It's when also think, good for the fan base, yeah. you know, like the new fan base because 100%. obviously Sheffield United in more recent times have been more successful, yeah. so. Younger fans at schools and stuff might support United more. Where Definitely. Wednesday getting a promotion now should help that. Definitely, and I think there there is a lot of um, ingrained sort of like you support Sheffield Wednesday and you support Sheffield United. And uh, I come from sort of like a mixed family where my dad's Wednesday and mum's United. Like all her side of the f well, her dad was United, her mum was Wednesday. It, it's such a like um, it's ju it's just how it is yep. sometimes in Sheffield and. Um, me and my dad used to go to watch obviously Wednesday, and, and like it's just it's just good for I think the sort of mood of the city yep. when both teams are They're doing well. They're such fierce rivals as yeah. well, but like like Liverpool Everton, the families are so split anyway. Yeah, that is so weird because away from the matches. It's all fine. They all, they're all fine. Yeah. The city's unbelievable. It's a great place to live. But then as soon as they play each other, as soon as they play each other, yeah. it's the fierce of, of rivalries. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's very, very sort of, it's just a split. It's just a complete split. You couldn't say that one team's got more than the other. It's just it's just the way it is. In school, do you play Wednesday v United, like the kids? It was weird. So like, in school, I'd say I was more, like where I grew up was more Sheffield United side yeah. of, of the city. But, but yeah, you, you could literally play Wednesday v United because you knew that half would be Wednesday, half would be Proper United. Split, it'd be a good game we had a, we well. had a random kid who was QPR fan. Like, it was just so random. Like, you're not even from London. Or like, <laughs> yeah, my dad's from London. Like, yeah, but you're in Sheffield now. Like, come on. But there's not many in Sheffield who are like, I'm a Man U fan. Yep. Like, when you sort of like drift out like Chesterfields and yep. sort of like these smaller towns, like you get more like glory supporters. But yeah, when you're in Sheffield, it's like it's one or the other. Like, not many will support either or. Um, so, but yeah, it's 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 great for the city that both teams are doing well. Um, Do you think Wednesday could go up again? Uh, I think I think that it's just a weird one because obviously they just got rid of Darren Moore. Yeah, it's, and a strange it's just one, a bit of turmoil at the club now again. Um, the, the the chairman has his ways of of doing things, and I'm sure he'll. He'll get someone in place before the start of the season, but um, yeah, I mean, they were the three teams that went up from League One last season. Sort of were adrift from the rest. Yep. Um, so I, I do see all three teams doing doing well in the championship. So yep. um, it'd be good to see them doing well, and if they could get up again, that's great. But, and that's the overall like goal for the chairman. That's what he wanted when we came in and. We obviously had the two playoff runs and didn't quite get it over the line, and we sort of paid for that with the with the point deductions. So, uh, but yeah, like I said, it's it's great for the 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 overall city. Just hopefully they do a bit more sustainable. Yeah, that's. I think that's. I think it's it's weird because both clubs are a bit sort of like yeah the, in turmoil the, at the moment. The they are. Yeah, both in United is just a bit like yep. what's going on. So, 
yeah, once everything gets sort of settled, I think people yep. can chill out a bit more and, and what, enjoy it. What was it like to leave Wednesday eventually? You played over 100 games for your, your club. What, yeah. what, was there mixed feelings when you left? Was you ex I know you'd be excited about joining a new club, but did you also harbour any grudges? Or um, I think it was time to go. Um, I was there a long time. Yep. I was there longer than I wasn't there. Yeah. In terms it's crazy. of my life, like it was, it was mental. Oh, your goalkeeping journey yeah. there, isn't it? Yeah. So there was a lot of memories there, a lot of uh, a lot of learning and and sort of like becoming the goalkeeper I am. And then it was just more like, right, well, I've learned all this. I just need to go out now and show it. Yeah. And the fact that I got the opportunity to do that straight away uh, at Derby this year has been in class to be fair uh, and what about your loan moves then like you, you've already mentioned the Barnsley one and uh, yeah. Alfreton as well so Alfreton was um due to me getting sent off in my under uh, so it was final year of my scholar and um I got a bit mouthy to a linesman got sent off and yeah it was a whole thing and basically I got banned for the last three games of the under 18 season um I remember Kirky coming and seeing me. He's like, right, this is what you need to do. You need to go and see... Stuart Gray was the manager at the time. He's like, uh, yeah, you've signed your new deal, but like, you've just shown him that you might not be trusted, like all like this. And it's like, what you need to do, you need to go and knock on his door. Oh, no. Like, basically, like, it's not me. Like, I need you to, like... Apologise. Understand. Yeah, like, understand that uh, it's a rush of blood and this is not like how I conduct myself on the pitch normally. It was the heat of the moment, blah, blah, blah. So I absolutely sweat. I'm like, oh my God, like knocking on his door. Like I've never Shaking. knocked. I'm, I'm like, what am I, 17? Like, I'm just like, nah. Uh, sorry, 18. And I literally walked, he's like, right, son, like, what's up? Like, oh, Gaffer, I just like come to speak to you about like obviously what happened at weekend. And he's like, well, Obviously, it just puts a little bit of a like red flag out there for me and stuff like this. He's like, I'm like, oh, I, like nothing like this will ever happen again. Like, he's like, okay, son, like I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I come out, okay, cause I had it going. Like, oh yeah, it went all right. And then literally two days later, Rhodes rang me up. He's like, right, uh, I've rang Nicky Law. Uh, you're going Alfreton for the rest of the season, like men's football in and around it. Um, That's class. That just want, uh, they just want you to sort of go in, put a bit of pressure on. Um, who was it? Um, John Warsnop was the goaler, uh, Spider. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, is it, uh, they, want, they want to put a, like, keep him on his toes a little bit. They were second in the National League. I was like, oh, ledge, like, get Class, promoted. What, what alone that is um, from a youth team. They lost 11 of the last 13. <laughs> I was like, we finished mid-table. It was mental. But uh, to be fair, towards the end of the season, uh, Nicky Law gave him my debut. Uh, played in Hereford's last ever game, like, before they went, like, slightly yeah. bust and then yeah. sort of come back. Uh, like in front of like three and a half thousand, I was like buzzing. I was like, oh, this is class. Like um, being out on loan, you get a proper buzz yeah. for first team football. Yeah, don't you? A proper and, buzz. And then I come on off the bench in the last game of the season against Macclesfield, um, and then yeah, went back. And then I was like in first team football. Um, I think Cam Cam went out. Cam went to Alfreton the next season and um, played like the first half of the season. Um, while I was sort of like third choice, sort of traveling around. And then uh, uh, Norm rang Rhodes up. It was like, uh, Dave, I was gone down injured. Um, need a goalie. It's like, okay, yeah. He's like, we need, we want Joe. Like, that's class. I worked that. with Joe like a year, want him. And uh, Lee Johnson sort of backed uh, Norm and uh, yeah, brought me in, played two games, played against Bristol City at uh, Ashton Gate, uh, drew 2 2, and then played against you guys. Oh well, which was like obviously a massive local derby and huge game. That. All my mates are in the crowd behind me, like Sheffield United fans, and give me absolute pelters. But what like, was the score that day? Two 0 You you beat us, Did, yeah. So I think Terry Kennedy, the centre back, scored, and he's from Barnsley and all his family. And when he scored, he ran to celebrate in front of his dad, and his dad's sticking two fingers up at him. Class. Love it's it. like a proper like <laughs> weird story. Yeah. I'd had an epidural the week before. That's the only reason why I remember that game. Yeah. I'd like missed a few games and like my back had gone and I had an epidural and I came back for that game and my back was fused. I couldn't move. And then I think I had a quite pretty quiet game. I think I only made one save. Yeah, like I don't think we were we were really in it. Like, you were up there as well. Yeah, we were. Yeah. We we were like, on a mad run, like where we'd like come right up the league and then uh, it sort of like tapered off and we end up missing out on playoffs. But um but yeah, I just remember being in that game. 
and Matty Dunn. Yeah. I got a pass back to me and I don't know why I did it. I chopped him. I <laughs> nice, like, I love all that. I was like, what am I doing? And I'm, I'm like, I'm not aware of where he is. If he's like turned quick and I just like, oh, I just kicked it as far as I panicked. <laughs> did something brilliant and oh, then panic. Yeah, but uh, that, was, uh, that was like my, like Nicky Law was like, at Alpha and was like, oh my God, this is the old school, like manager coming in, absolutely rinsing everyone. Like this ain't good enough. Like literally went around every single player, like nailing them. And then Lee Johnson, like he's kicking bins around. <laughs> and I'm like, we had like these black sort of, um, they were like school bins, like with, that you put the bin bags over and that they've got the little lid. So we had them for kit, by, kit um, like where you put your dirty kit. He's coming out, oh, I just booted that in that game. Like, well, I think we're one nil down. He's like, "This ain't good enough." Like, <laughs> I was just literally yeah, rinsing I, everyone. angry, angry as well. And I was like, "Oh my god!" But like, it's, it's it's just what you need. Uh, it's and the then, sort of and stuff then, you do need. Yeah. And then, like, say, um, it was my um, Ross Turnbull was there as well. Another yeah, big goal. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. and he was just like sort of like walking around with his with his back out, seized up everywhere, but. What a guy, mate. And then Dave, obviously, I knew from Wednesday before. And uh, Chris Dibble was there as well. Uh, Big Dibs, Dibs the nicest guy yeah. in the world. Chris we Dibble, were, uh, massive uh, shout we out to Wrexham. Yeah. He's yeah. the scratchiest, most allergic person I've oh. ever met, but the nicest person. Yeah. He's allergic to grass. And, isn't he? and he dives on it. Yeah. <laughs> Is he actually allergic uh, to well, grass? That's what we say. Yeah, he's just flaring he, up He flares up all the time. He's <laughs> honestly one of the, uh, probably the nicest person I've, I think I've ever met. Yeah. What yeah, he ain't got a bad bone in no, him. No, no, I really enjoyed Dibs. Yeah, he's funny as well. Big it? sweaty man on a night out as well. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's a sweaty man. He wears a great chest sized trouser as well. <laughs> he wears his shorts so high. Oh, like up here. <laughs> Class, what a guy, man. Yeah. Uh, did you have any horrible initiations? Yes. Um, so I had to sing twice at Wednesday. I had to. Why? Uh, so we had a, uh, So as a scholar, we had a Christmas uh, dinner. We had to sing for our dinner. That was in duets. So me and Cam sang Robbie Williams' Angels. Yeah. Oh, I literally... Butchered. Yeah, but I carried him. Oh, nice, massively. yeah. Massively. Yeah. And he's still regret... Like, he's still like, no, nah, no, nah, you didn't, but I did. <laughs> Won us both 50 quid as well. Dave Jones, 50 quid each took winners. So yeah. he owes me 50. Um, and then... Um, which I went straight to Meadow Hall and spent yeah, in my scholar days. Straight so away. Like, oh, it's unreal. New my petrol for week. <laughs> but, um, and then my actual initiation, we went to Slovenia for a pre-season tour because uh, Milan Mandric was the owner at the time. And uh, Enrique Iglesias, hero, mm. butchered. Yeah. Um, again, wasn't as bad as Cam's because he got... <laughs> Food thrown at him, and oh yeah, oh, he, he sang um, Ronan Keating roller coaster. Oh no! But like, didn't know the words, and they made him sing again the night after. He had to sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. It's just not good enough. Is that, it? That, that, that's degrading, <laughs> that guy. That's bad. That. But I, f I believe he's got better with mm. age. Okay. Um, We're calling I'd like, you out, I'd like, I'd like to think so. Yeah. Send in um, a voice note. To yeah. Prove it. And then. Uh, England was the worst. Yeah, I can imagine this a is a brutal environment. A.D. Boothroyd, manager. It was his, I think it was his first or second time that he had the team. And he was like, right, none of this like big time stuff. If you're new to the team, you've got to sing. I was like, there's seven of us. And we went away to Holland, uh, sorry, Germany, um, to play in a tournament. Uh, and all the teams were in the same hotel. And we were all in the same dinner hall. Yeah. So he's like, right, we're here for seven nights. We'll have one singer a night. Who wants to go first? I was like, stuff it. Get your hand up. Get get it out of the way. And because obviously I'd seen it at um, at Wednesday, like, all right, chairs out, banana in my hand as a mic, like, as you do. He was all over it. He was like, yeah, love it, Joe. I love your preparation. <laughs> like, and... Um, I sang uh, Reach for the Stars by oh, S Club, S Club 7. 7. What a tune. And just like got everyone going and like all the Germans are in that corner, all the Turkish in and the Dutch are in and they're like, what the fuck's the English doing yeah. in the corner? It, it was literally the corner, Brits Abroad. It? it was yeah. Brits Abroad, karaoke in the corner. And but uh, He'd have loved that you were the first to put your hand uh, up as well, just get it over and Every time with. I've bumped into him since, it's like before I tell anyone about like, uh, what a goalie you are or anything like that 
he got up in front of 100 people and sang like and that's the best thing i could ever want <laughs> i was like decent not about goalie as yeah. well yeah like cheers but no uh i got on with ad to be fair yeah he was, he was in his own sort of world a bit but like yeah i really enjoyed him class right uh before we carry on then let's talk some gloves Hi, this is Matt Smith, and this is the glove review on the Yours Mine Away podcast. Yeah, uh, what gloves are you currently wearing? I'm in the uh, Adam Sells um, <laughs> Total Contacts. This is the new, uh, the new style, the new range. What size do you wear? These are a nine and a half, um, which he sent out to me for the last sort of couple of games of the season. Um, but they're a little bit tighter uh, in and around the finger uh, inside, so. Uh, I think I'll be a, a 10 next year yeah. going up in the world. What do you look for in a glove? Um, Very v- random, uh, vague questions, many answers. Confidence. Yeah. I think just knowing that they're never going to be a problem for me and that I don't have to worry about them. No excuses in your gloves. Yeah. Like, I'm just thinking, oh my God, I haven't washed my gloves. Or, or like they, they might be slippy today because it's rained a little bit or like it's too dry. Like they're just going to be like really like sort of smooth. And like, you never sort of like get problems with it. And they're quite durable like I, I i'm one i'm not a, a new pair of gloves every, i was gonna ask every, this yeah. now how many games four i think they've had two games yeah. already and like to be fair like they're not bad i mean they're I, in I, very I might, good condition you'll wear not, them for the first week I don't, I don't know if i've had much doing them to be fair um but yeah one nil and a nil nil in them uh but yeah um i could wear them for four or five six games yeah. if if they're still in good nick and then they're just coming to training gloves then. I, uh, I was saying this last week, that the gloves are that good now from Celtic that you end up, it's your training pairs that die quicker. Yeah, they do. So like, then you end up moving your match pair down just because your training pair's gone. Yeah, and you're like, all right, I'll get another pair out for matches. But like, I, I, realistically, like, I don't I don't like new gloves. Like after two days build up, like I might wear them on a Tuesday, wash them on a Wednesday, and then I'll wear them on the Friday and then wash them on the Friday, and then that'll be they'll be ready for the game if it's a brand new pair. Yep. And then then they'll just be match match pairs, and I'll just keep sort of. How, how do you them. look after your gloves? Yeah, I just, I just refresh them sort of through the week, like because I know they're going to be sat there drying out. until Friday, and then play on Saturday. I'll um, on a Monday when I get in, I'll give them a quick wash, and then before I leave on a Tuesday. Because I know Wednesday is going to be. And they are. To be fair, the heaters at Derby's tra- in the training um, in the changing room at the training ground. Uh, they just blast the heaters out. Do they? Like, yeah. It's dry up. I'm like, nah. Kit so, room's my favourite place. So the kit room because it's I always got that like environment of like damp, wet yeah, washing machine. I know what you mean. But then sometimes I find that they just grab gloves and put them in the washing machine. Yeah. I'm just like, nah, I can't. Sit have them fun. on a radiator. Yeah. Um, so I like to keep them, keep them close yep. until games, and then the kit man can have them. And then he's trusted. Yeah. You trust him? Yeah. See, I still don't trust. Yeah. I trust my him. own match gloves. I can't, what, I can't what, let he, them go. He had one, uh, one incident this, this season, but, um, he got lucky because to be fair, like the gloves weren't in bad Nick, but they were my training pair. Yeah. Uh, and he forgot to bring my match pair, but they were fine. Yeah. Yeah. Did you give him a bit? Mm. Yeah. Let him know. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. It has yeah. to be done. I, don't, I still, my gloves is the only thing I won't trust. I could, I could put on a different pair of boots for games, shin pads, flip flops, anything like that. My gloves, I have to take them myself. I, I remember, um, I just, uh, I was wearing Nikes all the way up to, we played Ipswich at home. And then one of the lads come in and was like, oh, they've sent me the wrong size boots in these Pumas. This was like on the day of the game in the morning. Mm. And, He's like, oh, you can have them, Joe, if you want. Like, yeah, they're my size. Like, I just wore them in the game. Like, and they were good as gold. Were they, yeah. Like, I was like, oh, my God, these are class. And I still wear them now. Yeah. Like, literally converted. He just he converted you to Puma by yeah, accident. by accident. And now he has to get me loads of boots. That's all right, isn't it? Well, works out well for you. sponsored by Puma. I'm yeah. like, oh, if you get them for no, yeah. like, help, a, help a brother out. Yeah, surely. Puma, if you're listening, Joe wants boots, mate. Absolutely. <laughs> right, have you got any weird superstitions? Anything goalkeeping-wise that you do that's weird? I wouldn't say. Do any, just, I won't say I've got superstitions. I just put my towel on the same side of the goal. Yeah, you put a towel I, I don't on the goal. Put it, I don't, sorry, I don't Ooh. put it on the goal. It's at the side of the goal, but it's always on the right side. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other, I don't really do much. Yeah. I, I heard like people put the right glove on left. Yeah, glove. yeah. If it happens, it happens. Yeah. Stuff like that. What about warm ups though? Do you do like a same warm up every week? Depends how I feel. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll chop it down a little bit if it's like three games in a week or. But, um, shout that. Um, but yeah, like I don't, 
I don't read too much into stuff. I remember Rhodes, he was, because Rhodes is the most suspicious, uh, superstitious man ever. Like, he, it was at the Bolton game. And um, because I'd had crosses put in from the left hand side for the Burnley game, he was like, oh, um, do you want me to go out on the left again? Like, put crosses in. I went, oh, I don't mind. Like, put him because we were warmed up on that right side. I like, just put him from here and then we walk over. He's like, what? Like, yeah, but you had it from there at, at the Burnley game. Like, so, like, it's fine. Like, it doesn't matter. It's sometimes <laughs> it, it, that's the the best way to be is just go, well, it doesn't matter what I did last week because this week's a different game. Yeah. It's like, you know, like when you watch too much video analysis and you look too much into it, you're like trying to predict things instead of just concentrating on each yeah, individual I think thing. It's, I think it's a lot with like like free kicks and use the wall. Like, oh, he, he, he goes wall side a lot. He goes yeah. wall side a lot. And then you're thinking, oh, he's going over the wall. Take he's going step, over the wall. And, he and then you get done there. It's like, Sometimes it's better to just like right, he can he can go over the wall, but like if he puts it over the wall yeah. realistically and it's in the top corner, it's got to be some free kick. And like if he beats you, he beats you. Yeah. Uh, but I just think like like you say if you you can look far too much into stuff. And do you, do you like video analysis work? Um, I like to be aware of what's coming to a point. I don't want like bombarded with like he takes shots from here, here, yeah, here, yeah. Here, like. But um, no, I like to like, so you might have a free, tick, free kick taker who's got different technique. You might just be like a literally a straight run smash, smash it, yeah. rather than like a curler. Yeah. And especially like penalties, you have a little look at penalties and yeah. stuff like that. And See, I love looking at penalties. I get like obsessed with it. Like I'm like looking f like into it. Like I'm like, oh. uh, we, um, against Accrington Stanley earlier on in the season, uh, Sean McConville, he, um, we looked at his penalties before the game and uh, basically it was so like, we, we basically decided that it was going to be my left hand that he was going to go, like that's his go-to. But like, I literally was just looking at the penalties. I was like, but when he goes to the right hand, he takes this little set step outwards to then whip. And I was like, but I don't know. I didn't even mention it to Andy. Yeah. Like, I was like, Sierra Phil. Yeah. And I've seen him do it like on just before he started. I was like, I'm oh, stuff it, I'm doing it. And he literally just put it there and I caught it. Oh no, I cherished it. And then uh I'm like on the floor, I'm giving it this one and like this. And then uh, to be fair, I literally threw it out, kicked it up the field. Their big meter just went bang, straight over the top of Kurt Davis and uh him and um I think it was James Chester at the time that like, sort of come together and another penalty. Oh no. But he did the same again with the little step and I've just gone big right hand again and he put it wide on that side. No way. So, like, so you had the read on him then, yeah? I had the both reads on him and I, I, was, I had him on toast in the game. He's like, let's come towards the end gone. of the game. Like, it's 3-0 to us and I'm picking up. Did you tell him after the game? No, I didn't say it up to him, but um, he... Um, he was like coming to close me down. I was like leaving the ball at my feet and stuff. And shit he's, out and of he, he's giving me some like shit in uh, in his scouse accent. Yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, you're, you're decent at penalties to be fair. <laughs> Class. <laughs> I, there's nothing better than a bit of shit out of especially if you've saved a penalty. I always go straight up to him and go, I knew he was going to do that. Do you know why? And tell him exactly why I knew why. Because it's in their head then for yeah. the next penalty. Yeah. Because they're like, oh no, goalkeepers are looking at it. Yeah. Like, the way that they like throw that. their arm or the yeah. way they step up or... Even like the fact of like touching a boot, mm. if I look at all the weird crappy bits, I think, yeah, I've got you here. I think the big one, Flabs, uh, Daryl Flaharvin was massive into that. Like, what a coach, by the way. Oh, next level, like detail. Yeah. Where, where did you, did you have him? So I went in, before I signed for uh, Scunthorpe, I went and trained with him at Wigan. Oh, what a good coach. Mate, he's like such a good guy as well, like away from football, like, but then like when it's foot, like it's, you're in training, it's like bang. And then that's when that's when Campy come in another goal. Eh, obviously, I actually bumped into Campy uh, in Portugal uh, a couple of weeks ago. I had a coffee with him. What a guy, mate! Great guy. Um, All goalies are. Yeah, um, but yeah, um, yeah. He, he, it was. Uh, I lost so much weight. Yeah, His sessions, mate. Like two so and a half hard. hours long. It was like you do your session for an hour and a half. You join the team, and they're like, right, we didn't finish our session, so we're going to go back over for half an hour. It's like, but it was like. It was so like every week was so different because of who we were playing. Yep. And it was like, right, they've got a winger on the right. He cuts in all the time. Left, uh, the right winger, 
he's also right footed, but he's more down the line and he'll stand it up. And but you just do that specific stuff. Everything like that. I remember doing that with him here. But no, it was, uh, I did a pre season and it was tough. Yeah. Like you said, you'd oh. go and do like half an hour shooting with strikers, and then he'd be like, right, we're going to go and Back finish up. off our sets. Instead of just going, lads, look a bit tired, you've done a lot of dives there, he'd be like, I've put a session on, we're going to finish this it. This is the plan. Yeah. yeah, I need to finish it. Yeah. yeah. We, had, we, we had heart rates on as well at that time. It was like, through the roof yeah like the sports science was like nah this is mental it's a lot but but yeah he was um he was really good like the, to be fair the coaches we, that i've had like with Rhodesy and uh weaves come in for a bit then flavs and then back to weaves and then uh, we had basso last year adriano basso yeah uh who was just like intensity levels like were just like um sort of through the roof like he just wanted everyone to be like sort of super fit and but in a good way, like yeah. he wouldn't like functional fit. Yeah, and I think he sort of got used to it because it was his first job and stuff like that. And but like towards the end, like he was just like, right, I just want you to sort of fly in. Like he literally just had us both. Me and Bailey were just like, it was just like sort of uh, plyometric sessions every day. Yeah. Like, but uh, no, I've really enjoyed like sort of like seeing all the different sides of the coaches I've worked with, and then like the goalkeepers who've come in along the way and you see and do you like to structure your week now that you, you obviously after such a uh, you've played every game this season was, and do, do you tape tape you how you train it was um it was more of it it was more of a learning curve for me this season because because i've never played every every game in a season and sort of like churning out the games yep. it was um like andy was great with me to be fair like warrington he was like like just sort of worked through it with me he's like Let's see how you feel like Speak to in the morning. Yeah, I don't. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. Like we can taper it down. We can do a bit more on these days. And like, is there anything you want to specifically work on? And uh, I just think a big thing, especially with with uh, uh, the gaffer uh, now at Derby, he's just like, I just want you to come. Like I just want you to come for everything. Like I don't care if it's on the edge of the eighteen. Like just come. Like if you miss it, don't care. He'll take responsibility. But just come for the next one. Yeah. Like, just keep coming because if you like, he's like, uh, I remember I come for a, um, I think we're playing Cambridge at home and we're winning 1 0. And they were like, sort of pumping it on us a little bit. And we were getting a bit like, oh, and they had a, a wide free kick and he's literally just laced it. And it was like just inside the 18. And I've just come. And I think Joe Ironside's like, took my legs as well. <laughs> I've just landed on the floor. And then the ref blew his final whistle. Oh. And Gaff was like, oh. <laughs> nice. I celebrated it like a goal and all that. It's just me coming for a cross. I'm like, yeah, I'm here for that. Yeah, good. Like, and and to be fair, like as the season's gone, because I wouldn't really said that before this season. I was like one of those goalkeepers who'd be like, right, yeah, I'm coming for this. Like, I didn't really have that sort of like, not get up and go to to do it, but more the confidence. Yeah, but confidence because someone just come to you and go, like, just do it. Yeah. Like, so what if you miss it? Like, you'll come for the next one and you get that one. Yeah. It's like, but it's just been. Um, just been brilliant with me. Yep. Like literally, just sort of let me and Andy get on with it. Like as long as you're proactive, you see, you play what you see, come for crosses. You're always going to make like any goalkeeper can make saves, make saves but yeah. if you're making big saves, like even better. And yeah, just just keep doing what you're doing. Class. Uh, but yeah, no, I couldn't couldn't speak highly enough of the coaching staff at the minute. Yeah. Uh, what's your release away from football? Uh, family. Yeah. Uh, especially with the the new little one. Um, she just turned one nice. um, in April, so uh, she's been a handful. Yeah, <laughs> but now uh, she—I tell you what—she's been good as gold. Uh, she's she's happy. She's she's playful. She's. Do you find that uh, your football life is it's benefited from your yeah, family life? It's 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 changed. mad because my outlook on on football now is completely different, and like I'm doing it for them now. Yeah, like, I'm not doing it just for me or like anything like outsourced it's literally like this is my family yep got my got my, uh, my my partner sean and my little girl sienna now and literally like every, that is for them now like i'm providing for them their life our lives together and and it's not i say it's an added pressure but it's something that you want to do and you strive to do you want to make them proud of you and it's, yep. it's just different like obviously you'll you'll yep. understand and 100 percent. but that like, you don't realize that until until you got a little one like it's uh, football when i had kids became a bit more fun because i i could separate like at home i was like dad i had a role a responsibility and i could go and be stupid and goofy and yeah. big kid at football but i also then 
it made me go, if I did anything wrong, like made a mistake in training or in games, I'd just then go, what do my kid think? Yeah, Are they I still heard you say on the, on the previous pods, that it's literally, and, and you know what, I've actually, I've used that because it is such a, it's just a down to earth. It's like, oh, it, in the grand scheme of things, yep. she does not have a clue nah. of what you've just done or, who, what, or what people capital. think of it. She's just looking at you going, Oh, that's my dad. Yeah, exactly. And he's going to pull a funny face or he's going to make me laugh. Chase or me he's around. Gonna, he's going to change my nappy and wipe my bum. Yeah. Like, it's literally, that's all it is at home. Yeah. And it, like I say, it's, it's, it's the perfect sort of balance of you can go to work, do what you do, and then you've got that escape release yeah. of this is my family and use that to sort of build you up and build you up and, and perform again in football that's it yeah right and then finally right uh, i ask everyone this question now but what does the goalkeepers union mean to you because everyone's answer is slightly different uh it's a support system in terms of everyone in that union i could go to any one of the lads and i know they'd help me out and i know that any other goalkeeper could come to me and i would do my best to try and help them out and Nothing more has shown me that than this year. Uh, big up to Scott Loach. Like, seriously, what a guy. Like, I genuinely couldn't speak high enough of the guy. Like, he's come in when he, the first day he signed, he come up to me and he just went, I am here for you. Ledge. And he says, I am not here to do anything else. I'm here to make sure that you're ready for games. I'm here to help you in training. I'm here to help you in the gym. I'll come in with you. I'll be a gym partner. I'll do whatever you want. We go in the swimming baths together. like, And he's just been like nonstop from day one. He's doing his badges and stuff with Derby. And, and he's got his, his goalkeeping school on the side and yeah. stuff like that, and which, which helps him out. But day to day, he's trained pretty much every single day. He's got knocks and niggles, and he's just like, yeah, I'm out. He's my head tennis partner, like, but just he's my biggest cheerleader. Yeah. Like that is literally what he is. It's class, and it's great to have. And I've never seen anything like it in football in my life, and I couldn't be more thankful to him for this season. He's genuinely been like good as gold with me. Class. And uh, no, no, what a guy, mate. And that that is literally what a, a GK union is. Yeah. Like he's the epitome of the union. Like, because if he can come in and do that job to that standard, uh, when he had no right to even do that or to that to that um, to that magnitude, uh, uh, I love him to bits. Class. <laughs> mate, what way to finish on that? What a great episode this has been, Joe. Thank you very much for coming in, mate. It's been an absolute class to speak to you and that. No, thanks for having me, mate. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. Time flies as well, doesn't it? it goes quick. Oh, not wrong. <laughs> right, this has been the Yours Mine Away podcast with me, Mark Howard. Uh, please make sure you subscribe and give us a five-star rating. It really helps us grow. Take care, guys. All the best. Cheers, Joe. Nice one. Cheers, guys. What a save from Mark Howard. 